So we're going to start off. You guys were actually just here touring this facility the first time you've been in one of these together. What did you see and how do you see this having potential to increase profits for both of your businesses? Well, Larry and I met uh, a couple months ago and he told me about the concept. Uh, our companies have had a long-standing relationship. In fact, all the way back to 1922. That's how far our relationship goes back. Not my and Larry's personally. But, uh, <laughs> and so we talk a lot about uh, what we can do for each other and how we can make our companies stronger working together. And he explained this concept and uh, certainly wanted to see it firsthand, wanted to hear more about it. It's been a very productive morning, that's for sure. And, and Frank, it's really about meeting the unmet needs for our consumers, and this is one of our concept stores that we call the Health Hub, and you know, it's about access, convenience, and it's more of a health destination in terms of helping you know, consumers get more engaged around their health, and as a result, to create more healthier outcomes. Great. So obviously you two enjoy each other's company, but does it make sense from a business aspect? Where do you see the, the benefits for your individual businesses? Well, Frank, you think about the fact that we're in 10,000 communities across the country. Today, about 70% of the U.S. population lives within three to four miles of a CVS. So we listen to our customers all the time in terms of, you know, what does convenience, what does access, uh, what is their unmet need to meet their day-to-day -day challenges? And you know, the partnership that we have, you know, does that very thing. It, it, it makes access to products and access to care more convenient. And David, you're also moving to seven day a week delivery. Does this help you with people dropping off and picking up here? This is a, a big advantage for us. And uh, healthcare is uh, certainly one of our strategic imperatives. It's one that we're investing in heavily. And that's why this relationship is so important. But the uh, access point process where UPS customers can come in and pick up or, uh, or drop off packages as they're conducting their day-to-day -day life and the convenience of the locations along with the convenience of, of UPS has just been a, a good partnership for us. Excellent. Well, your legacy competitors, FedEx and Walgreens, they also have a very similar partnership. It appears to be very similar on the surface level. What would you say the differences are between your two approaches? Well, David, we have a tremendous amount of flexibility in terms of, you know, uh, my access uh, allows you to, you know, direct activity to the store that's closest to you. Uh, we think customers absolutely love that's the feedback that we're getting. What about for you, David? You know, what's important to us is to make sure that we take the strengths of both companies and we look to where we can make it a better experience for our customers. If we focus in that regard, then we will have differentiation and it's the customer that will vote. Right. Uh, most companies are fighting off disruption. In your case, you're actually fighting off disruption from the same company, Amazon. In your case, Amazon's projected next year, according to Ship Matrix, a company I know that you're familiar with, to double the amount it self-delivers. And on your end, at Loop Capital, they just put out a note just a few days ago saying that they see Amazon Pharmacy having the potential to take 8% of the market within the next five years. Does this partnership help you fight against that level of disruption? Well, Frank, a again, as we've been talking, it's, you know, how do, we, how do we meet the unmet needs of consumers? And, you know, I, I think from the relationship that we have, innovation is in both of our companies' DNA. And we've got a great partnership here. And... You know, look, we work very hard to make sure we don't leave any white space for disruption. So, you know, as you think about we have tremendous respect for Amazon in terms of what they've accomplished, and, you know, whether you're talking about PillPack, we have those same products and services. And you, know, you sit here and say, you know, who should be worried about, you know, the innovation? I would say it's probably the independent pharmacy operator, perhaps the regional grocers that aren't making the investments to meet those customer demands. And I think that, uh, that the key for us is to embrace disruption and the fact that uh, the market's changing, our customers are changing, e-commerce is growing. So we can't uh, look for ways to fight that, off, fight that off, we have to embrace it. And uh, when you think about e-commerce, you can think about large retailers, but there's a lot more to, to e-commerce than, than a large retailer. Uh, we do business with 90% of the major retailers in the uh, world, and that is a big part of e-commerce. 
and then just hundreds of thousands of small and mid-sized customers. So our focus is on all customer bases and not just one particular e-tailer or one particular group, but it's across the entire base. And we have some uh, a question actually for one of our anchors right now. We're going to toss things back to them and gentlemen, if you just look in the camera. Uh, Larry, uh, John Fort in New York. I'm wondering if this becomes the new normal, how much are you going to have to change store design and employee training to have handling customers' property uh, as part of what you do? Yeah, John, we started our Health Hub concept uh, in, uh, in Houston, Texas earlier this year. The feedback that we've gotten from the customers that we serve there has been terrific. And, you know, it's resulted in a more rapid rollout. We're here in Atlanta. Uh, we're also expanding this concept as we speak in Philadelphia, Tampa, with plans for 1,500 Health Hub stores by the end of 2021. And there is a different service model that goes beyond the role of the pharmacist, the role of the nurse practitioner in a minute clinic, you know, it includes services that we call a care concierge that is really helping consumers, you know, find whether it's a product, a service, and actually, you know, help them on a path to better health. So we're off to a wonderful start. And, you know, it is, you know, satisfying the, again, the unmet needs for consumer health. One last question, gentlemen. FedEx and Walgreens are also partnering on drone delivery. Can we talk about when you see that being commercially feasible, profitable? Is that a big part of your strategy going forward? I can start uh, that question. We are the first company, UPS, first company that got the full FAA uh, Part 135 certification. And we are the only company in our industry that has a business that we're making commercial deliveries on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, we already have 1,900 of these commercial deliveries that we have made. Now, we're also working together on some very important tests that when the regulations are developed, that we believe there's a lot of expansion opportunities, and we will be very, uh, we'll be very much at the lead of that. But this is not a future tense thing, like a lot of companies are talking about what they're going to do. We're actually doing this today with those 1,900 commercial deliveries. And Larry, do you see this as an important piece of your business going forward, the ability to drone deliver prescriptions and maybe retail items? Well, Frank, I, I think it goes back to this notion of, you know, how does the consumer define access and convenience as we go forward? And, you know, we see the opportunity that the drone, you know, has in terms of meeting customers' needs.